Hello, fellow citizens of Earth. This is your Space News for April 24th, 2019. And let's kick it off by going into low Earth orbit for our space traffic. Lifting off nominally from Launchpad Zero at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on April 17th, 2019, at 2046 and 7 seconds Universal Time, was a Northrop Grumman Antares in the 230 configuration, nominally carrying the SS Roger Chaffee Enhanced Cygnus to deliver 3,166 kilograms of cargo to the International Space Station. Birthing occurred on April 19th at 11.31 Universal Time to the International Space Station's Unity Module in the Nadir position, and is planned to remain there until July 23rd. This was the final flight of a Cygnus under the original Commercial Resupply Services contract, but Cygnus cargo runs will continue under the Commercial Resupply Services 2 contract NASA awarded Orbital ATK, now Northrop Grumman, in 2016. This flight was also the final flight of the Antares in its 230 configuration. Upgrades to Antares structure will allow its RD-181 engines to run at a higher thrust, and in addition, unneeded materials and systems are being removed as well. This new configuration will be called the Antares 230+, and will be able to provide Cygnus with an extra 800 kilograms of cargo capacity. A Long March 3B G2 rocket launched on April 20th at 1441 Universal Time from Launch Complex 3 at the Zhichang Satellite Center carrying Beidou 44, a geosynchronous orbital component of the Chinese Beidou Navigation Satellite System, a system that China has developed for its own navigation independent of either the United States GPS, Europe's Galileo system, or Russia's GLONASS. This launch was notable as it was the 100th mission of the Long March 3 rocket. Just recently confirmed, a Boeing-built Intelsat communication satellite in geostationary orbit appears to have suffered a fuel leak on April 7th and is releasing debris fragments. The three-year-old Intelsat 29E was immediately knocked out of service and appears to be tumbling. No official word on if the problem originated with the satellite or if it was a strike by a micrometeoroid or orbital debris. And we've got one launch on the books on April 30th, a Falcon 9 in the Block 5 configuration carrying a Dragon on CRS-17 to the International Space Station. Our big story this week is unfortunately not the best one in terms of optics. And in addition to that, we actually have very little information about it as well. During a test of the Super Draco thrusters on the Crew Dragon vehicle on April 20th at Landing Zone 1 in Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, an anomaly occurred that destroyed the capsule, a plume of orange smoke consistent with the type of fuel the hypergolic Super Dracos use, dinitrogen tetroxide and monomethylhydrazine. The Crew Dragon vehicle lost was the same one that had flown Demonstration Mission 1 in March 2019. No injuries occurred. Anything else beyond this, we don't know, and likely won't know for a while. Rightfully so, as an investigation will most certainly occur, and it should be allowed to take its course. If any additional developments occur, we'll cover them. Video of the anomaly did make its way onto the internet unauthorized, and if you'd like to see it, well, it's not too difficult to find it. This serves as a sobering reminder that space really is hard. That's not an excuse, it's a reality. Problems, when they occur, are rarely small and contained. But this is also an excellent opportunity for SpaceX and NASA. This anomaly occurred on the ground and with no injuries. From this, we'll most certainly see a better, safer Crew Dragon fly. And now to talk a little bit about big galaxies with no dark matter, here's Jade. Oh, hi, yes, um, can I get a venti diffuse galaxy easy on the stars and hold the dark matter? <sighs> Looks like the Starbucks menu of the universe just got a whole lot weirder. Researchers from Yale University have discovered yet another galaxy containing no dark matter. This ultra-diffuse galaxy, creatively named NGC 1052-DF4, or DF4 as his friends know him by, was first spotted in a previous set of images taken by the Dragonfly Telephoto Array, and then followed up by some Hubble Space Telescope imaging and spectroscopy through Keck-1 telescope on Mauna Kea. This follows a previous discovery made last year of NGC 1052-DF2, or DF2 as we're gonna call it, that shook the scientific community with 
with its bold claim that they had indeed made the first discovery of a galaxy sans dark matter. Met with equal parts praise and skepticism, the team was able to reconfirm their initial discovery after DF4 joined the party. Both DF2 and DF4 belong to a class of galaxies characterized by being ultra dim, super diffuse, and being about the same size as the Milky Way, but with 100 to 1000 times fewer stars, earning them the nickname of ghost galaxies. So how do you even measure the mass of something so dim and far away? Glad you asked. Using the Keck Cosmic Web Imager, researchers were able to measure the very precise speeds of globular clusters hanging out in the galaxy and found that their speed is actually consistent with the amount of matter we can see. If there was dark matter present, the speed would actually be much greater than the amount of visible matter could account for. So what is dark matter? <laughs> no idea, but it is a substance that basically dominates the universe and is essentially why galaxies don't spin themselves to death. It accounts for 85% of the total matter in the universe, and we call it dark because, well, it just doesn't seem to interact with visible light or any wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum at all. These recent discoveries actually reinforce the case for dark matter's existence, as it shows that it can be a substance entirely separate from the quote-unquote normal matter and doesn't need to be coupled with its luminous counterpart. Because dark matter is a strong, independent substance that don't need no normal matter to exist. Furthermore, theories challenging the existence of dark matter will find it immensely difficult to account for these dark matterless galaxies. So why don't these galaxies contain dark matter? Again, I don't know. Could it be they had it and then they lost it? Did they just form without it in the first place? Stay tuned to find out. As the team continues their hunt for these anomalies, they are hopeful that there are more out there just like it. Either way, this is a huge step in understanding the mysterious substance that's captured the hearts and imaginations of scientists and sci-fi fans everywhere. Plus, who doesn't love a good old fundamental shift in cosmological paradigm? And now for an update on the weather in our local interplanetary area, we throw it over to Dr. Tamitha Scove. Space weather this week is definitely picking up compared to last week. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see there's a corona hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone, and we're already beginning to feel its effects a little bit from the fast wind that is hitting Earth. And over the next couple days, we definitely could see some aurora, which is great timing for the Lyrids. It could make for some beautiful pictures. Now, as we switch to our backside sun, well, the picture isn't quite as rosy. We do have a corona hole that'll be rotating into Earth view here in the next maybe week or so, but there's not much in the way of bright regions. So amateur radio operators, shortwave radio operators, and emergency responders, well, the radio propagation is kind of low right now, and you're probably going to have to deal with these conditions for the next week or, or even more. Switching to our moon, we are now moving through the third quarter moon phase, and by the 28th, the moon will still be about 40% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you need to check your local rise and set times. And now for your Martian Minute. It saw 143 on the red planet, and today the high is a minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a little bit cooler than normal for this time of year. Now the low is a minus 144 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about average for this time of year, and the winds are out of the southwest at about 10 miles an hour. But that's not the big story. The big story is that JPL confirmed just today that the InSight lander did indeed record a Martian quake on April 6th using the very broadband sensors on the SICE instrument. This is the seismic experiment for internal structure. Now here is the actual quake pitched up about 60 times so that it goes into the audible range. Listen. Now the InSight team is super excited about the confirmation of these observations because this is the first time a seismometer's actually been on the surface of Mars. For all previous missions, the seismometer always was on the lander, so they never got as good of readings. And what this information can bring us is not only insight into the core of Mars, but it also will give us insight into the core of Earth in the not too distant future. That's one small step for Mars and one giant leap for Martian seismology. 
For more details on this week's space weather, including when and where to see Aurora, how amateur radio, shortwave radio, and emergency communications will fare, as well as what your GPS reception will look like, come check out my channel or visit me at spaceweatherwoman.com. And that wraps it up for us. Thank you so much for watching the Space News. And the excitement continues this Saturday at 1800 Universal Time. And this week we have Dr. Jared Espley, the magnetometer instrument lead on the Mars Orbiter Maven out of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. And if you can't watch the show live, feel free to leave your questions for Dr. Espley below in the comments, and we'll pull the great ones and put them into the live show. And of course, we'd like to thank all of our patrons of tomorrow. We are a crowdfunded show, and we're not able to do this without your support. If you got something of value out of the show and you'd like to give back, you can head on over to patreon.com slash tmro or subscribestar.com slash tmro. Thank you so much for watching this week's Space News, and don't forget to keep exploring. Researchers from Yale University have discovered yet another galaxy containing no black matter. Black matter? What the f***? It says black. <laughs> Holy sh**. Oh my god, it says black. Oh, oh man, okay. Dark. Alright. <laughs> oh man. Alright. Who doesn't love a good old fundamental shift in cosmological paradigm?